So to summarize, Kubernetes is a operations tool. It provides open source management for collections of processes over groups of machines. What it tries to provide is a very clearly specced set of fundamental resources. Uh, it really tries to steer clear of solving all the world's problems and all the world's use cases. The Kubernetes um, documentation actually has a what Kubernetes is not section that, that clear, clearly calls out Kubernetes is not designed to be an all-inclusive platform as a service style solution. Um, it's, this is very good to know what your scope and what your purpose is as a project. Um, but it also leads to solutions where uh, there's a lot of gaps around the edges where in order to really be effective with Kubernetes, you're very quickly going to realize you need access to aggregated logging, you need access to um, metrics, application metrics, you need access to user access management and um, identity management integration. You, there's a, a whole collection of services that go along with helping you be successful using Kubernetes. And uh, Red Hat has been a major player in this landscape, and we've been doing a lot of work to help provide a uh, supported base that you can work from, uh, from within this large context of uh, this large CNCF and cloud native ecosystem. Um, so what Red Hat does is we provide a distribution um, known as OpenShift. The actual uh, distro name is uh, codenamed OKD, and we take in upstream bits from uh, Kubernetes, from um, the OCI container community, uh, from Fedora, from uh, you know all over the open source space, and try to provide a supported collection of everything you need in order to be fully productive on any hardware. Um, we do this in a variety of ways. Uh, generally, we offer support around um, OpenShift uh, via a, a standard mechanism like, like we do with RHEL where um, you uh, get license, uh, licenses and can get support, uh, you know, first class enterprise support from, uh, from Red Hat. Um, I'll get more to the uh, offerings at the end of the slides, but uh, at a very high level, OpenShift really tries to include and extend and um, be a distribution around Kubernetes in order to help you be more successful and more productive. Same role that we play relative to the Linux kernel. We don't just give you the Linux kernel and say, good luck. We also give you command line utilities, um, you know, your bash, uh, login, uh, things like multi-tenant security, um, uh, package management, the ability to perform in-place upgrades of your operating system, um, all, all kinds of nice features that uh, go along with being productive uh, with Kubernetes. Um, so a really full-featured Kubernetes distribution that focuses on high-level features like being able to build, automate, iterate, and collaborate um, without regard for uh, really the hardware that you're using other than the performance requirements that, uh, that your workloads have. This image shows um, a kind of a, a stack diagram with um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux at the bottom. That's a fundamental piece of how we put OpenShift together. Um, no other Kubernetes distribution is uh, trying to provide a multi-tenant safe uh, cluster environment. Uh, every other Kubernetes offering I'm aware of has a, a single tenant per cluster uh, type of model. Um, Red Hat has a lot of customers and uh, enterprise use cases that really expect a, a multi-tenant safe system, and that's part of what we provide with uh, OpenShift. Um, so, in any of our supported offerings, we're going to expect uh, RHEL or Container, Container OS, uh, RHEL Core OS on the uh, host layer, so we can use SE Linux to protect the host instances from the containerized workloads. 
from there on up, uh, Kubernetes is really the next standardization layer. Um, on top of that, uh, OpenShift also provides additional build automation and developer uh, focused features. 